Hello guys, Dexpyro here. In today's video, I'm going to be going over frame data. This is a concept probably familiar to anyone who has ever played fighting games at least somewhat seriously, and you most likely won't learn much new from it. That said, for someone who is new to PvP or maybe hasn't really played any PvP games seriously, this video will give you a lot of valuable knowledge and will definitely help you up your PvP game. The first thing we have to understand is that every single attack is made up of three different stages. There is a startup stage, an active stage, and a recovery stage. The length of any of these stages is given in a number of frames, with one frame being the equivalent of 16.6 .6 recurring milliseconds. So an animation with a length of 20 frames would be one third of a second, or 333 milliseconds. Now let's take a look at each stage of an attack. First we have the startup of an attack. This is the part which most people usually refer to as how fast an attack is. The number of startup frames basically determines when your attack will start doing damage. So for example, if we take an attack which has a 30 frame startup, it means that from the moment you press your button on your controller and the game registers your input, it will take exactly 30 frames or half a second for the attack to actually generate a hitbox and do damage to your opponent. Next, we have the active stage of an attack. This one, to put it simply, is just how much an attack lingers. The more active frames an attack has, the better. The two best examples of attacks with high active frames in Elden Ring PvP are probably the Ashes of War, Storm Stomp, and Flaming Strike. For both of these attacks, once the startup frames are over, there is going to be a long period when there will be an active hitbox which can damage your opponent. Having a lot of active frames on your attack is good not only because it will make it a lot harder for your opponent to avoid or to punish your attack, but it can also, under certain circumstances, allow you to land combos which would otherwise be impossible. Again, the best example for this is probably the Flaming Strike Ash of War and its follow-up, which will not combo if you hit the first part of the Flaming Strike on the first active frame. But if your opponent is at a slight distance, so that a later active frame hits them, then the follow-up hit will combo together with the first one. In fighting games, we call these meaty combos. And last but not least, we have the recovery frames of an attack. After every attack, you have a certain number of frames where you can't perform another action yet. Because of how movement and hitboxes work in Souls games, the best way to measure recovery for most attacks is counting it from the first active frame. Since even if you have active frames threatening your opponent, if they have an option to either outrange you or poise through your attack, you're still technically in recovery from your attack and are already prone to get hit. One thing to note is that just because an attack has a fast startup doesn't necessarily mean that it will also have a fast recovery. The best example for this are two-handed twin blade attacks. Most of them have faster startups than most other R1 attacks in the game. But the recovery on them is so long that in most cases you can easily be punished before you can perform another action. I also want to give a special mention to two weapon classes which have been blessed by From Software with insanely short recovery times on their attacks. One of them being regular rapiers and the other one being the smaller curved swords which includes Shamshir, Shotel and the Scimitar. For rapiers, this only applies while one-handed, and for light curved swords, it applies while both one-handed as well as two-handed. These weapons have a 33% shorter recovery time than most regular fast weapons such as straight swords, other curved swords, spears or katanas, which makes them an excellent choice for a hit and run playstyle. If you are wondering where I get these numbers from, I'll quickly go over my method of checking both recovery as well as the startup of any attack in the game. There are two NPCs in this game which reset aggro every time you rest at a side of grace, with the grace conveniently available right next to them. One of them is the Turtle Pope, and the other one is Gurang. Now, since the Turtle Pope is a chill guy, and also because he has a shell which makes your lighter attacks bounce off him, he is not ideal for testing. So I go to the Bestial Sanctum and pick on poor Gurang. What I do is drop a message at his butt, since he does have a funny hitbox if you hit him from the front or the sides, which might give you inaccurate results. And then if you notice, when I stand over the message I dropped, it gives me a prompt to check it. However, if I do an attack, this prompt gets grayed out. 
By checking the exact frame the prompt gets grayed out in my video editing software and the exact frame Gurang takes damage, I can identify with 100% accuracy the startup of any attack in the game. As for the recovery, you just need to pay attention to the prompt again and compare the frames to when the attack did damage. Here, one thing to pay attention to is to make sure you walk or run into Gurang, since the idle recovery animation is longer and the prompt won't be available again until it finishes, or of course, until you cancel it into the walk or run animation. I haven't checked a bunch of attacks yet, but the ones I already did, I compiled in a spreadsheet which I will link in the description of the video. If you understand this concept of how an attack is made up of these three different stages, I feel like it definitely gives you an advantage in being able to judge when you can punish certain attacks or when you can safely attempt to throw in a poke or two without getting punished yourself. It also probably gives you a good idea why slower startup weapons are generally considered to be weaker in Souls games, or why Ultra Greatsword suddenly went from generally being considered a weak option in PvP to one of the best, all simply thanks to getting one attack with a very fast startup. I hope this video was helpful, and if you are interested in more Elden Ring PvP related content, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, as I will be creating more and more videos such as this one, hopefully elevating your PvP game to the next level.